As a kid who grew up in the 80s and 90s, when I think gaming, one of the first companies that comes to mind is Konami. As one of the staple companies for the NES, they released so many quality titles with a sound that's all too familiar when it hits your ear. A former shell of what they were, nowadays they mainly push pachinko machines and deny their employees from attending award events. But they weren't always this unsavory. And that's what I'm here to talk about. The Konami NES years. Hey guys, this is Matt, the LJN Defender, and I've been asked by Rewind Mike to talk about one of my favorite Konami games, Bucky O'Hare for the NES. Yes, this game is really special to me. I rented this game at least a few times when I was a kid because I was a big fan of the cartoon. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. And it's still to this day, it's one of my favorite NES games. If not, arguably my favorite NES game. Uh, it's based, like I said, this is based on the cartoon. And the cartoon, of course, is based on the comic. Came out in 1992. Uh, it's an awesome game. Um, if you like games like Mega Man, which, I mean, if you play the NES, um, chances are that you love Mega Man, you'll love this game. You should definitely check this game out. Um, it gives you a lot of variety because there's later on there's some uh, shoot 'em up levels, and it's, of course, primarily a platformer. But yeah, it gives you lots of, lots of variety. It's just got an amazing soundtrack, five playable characters, great level design. There's just, you can't go wrong with this. And this game especially, well, besides the fact that I rented it as a kid, uh, this was the first game I ever reviewed on YouTube. So, yeah, this game uh, started my YouTube journey. And, uh, yeah, my life has changed for the better since I started on YouTube. So, yeah, I owe this game a lot. So, yeah, you should definitely check out this game. It's, uh, unfortunately, it's a bit expensive these days. It, on average, it goes for, like, 120 bucks on eBay. So, either hit up your thrift shops or flea markets or... Emulate. I don't care. Emulate it. Get a flash card or just, just play it on an emulator and computer or get a flash card like a Neverdrive and just play it on there. It's too good not to play. So, yes, I definitely recommend Bucky O'Hare. This is an awesome game. You'll love it. Contra Force. As we all know, it's not your typical Contra game because there originally wasn't even going to be one. Planned for a Japan only release, the game was originally called R Count with no ties or connections to the Contra series before ultimately being cancelled for reasons. But instead of throwing away the current game, Konami decides to make use of it by localizing it for North America and throwing in the Contra name, and effectively making it a spin-off title. Instead of aliens or monsters, this time around you're dealing with your run-of-the-mill terrorists, which is fine for this Contra spin-off. As you would expect, the game still retains the run-and-gun action of the Contra name, but unfortunately is plagued with unreasonable slowdown and a more unproper difficulty unlike the previous two Contra games which balance good game design and enemy spawns. But with a selection of four characters with their own unique weapons, a power selection meter similar to Gradius, and rockin' ass tunes, Contra Force is still a game worth trying out. But unfortunately, due to its high rise in price over the years, the affordability of this game probably isn't going to be worth it to most. But whether you stand by emulation or everdrives, it's still a neat experience to give Contra Force a try. 1992's Monster in My Pocket is the video game adaptation of the franchise of the same name that mostly consisted of small plastic collectible figurines, whose designs were based off well-known mythological creatures and monsters that exploded into other merchandise like trading cards, comics, and cartoons. The plot of the game is kind of similar to the comic book series, where an evil warlock named Warlock wants to rule over the monsters, and any who oppose him, namely the heroes Vampire and the Monster, based on Dracula and Frankenstein's monster respectively, would have a spell cast on them that would shrink them to tiny size. Unfortunately, the spell gets boffed up and all the monsters are shrunk and teleported to California where they are saved by three kids. Wow, I'm way getting off track. I'll probably get back to the game. Vampire and the monster are relaxing and watching TV when Warlock appears and kindly lets them know that he sent his henchmen to defeat them, and the duo head off to stop them. The gameplay of Mimp, that's <laughs> pretty funny, is a side-scrolling beat-em-up where you and a friend must traverse through six stages varying through such locales as a house, construction site, and sewer, 
jumping and dodging obstacles, and pummeling Warlock's miniature minions. You can play as either the vampire or the monster, but they pretty much play the same. Both can perform a double jump, and their attacks send off a wave that pounces foes. You can also pick up keys and screws as a thrown weapon, as well as heart jars for a little health boost. Without question, MIMP is the right blend of fun gameplay with a dash of challenge, and smooth controls for taste, with the only bad thing being its short length. For presentation, MIP looks pretty damn cool with stages designed to make you feel like you've been shrunk to a tiny plastic figurine. Plus, the characters all look hideous and evil, in that special Nintendo way. And the music? It's Konami, need I say more? To wrap it up, Monster in My Pocket, you know what, I'm just gonna keep calling it MIMP. MIMP is a fantastic game in Konami's NES library, worthy of picking up. Just don't put it in your pocket. Slashing, stabbing, flailing, and reading. It's the lean, mean, green fighting machines. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in The Manhattan Project. The Shredder has taken April O'Neil and the island of Manhattan, and he wants the turtles to come and get them back. Well, if you wanted to hang out, all you had to do was call Shredhead. TMNT3 boasts an upgrading fighting system compared to the second game, but it still retains that same beat-em-up feel. Each turtle has their own unique attack this time around, along with a throw that can be used to help throughout the whole entire game. The additions really change up the way you approach the large variety of the foot soldiers that tend to pose more of a threat than the normal purple dress soldiers. On top of that, there is a huge mix-up of bosses ready to sabotage your rescue plan, sapping up all your extra lives for not playing careful or just going all out. Only being given three continues, three lives, and about five pizzas scattered in the eight different stages, this game can be a bit of a trek when trying to complete, but every bit is fun. With easy controls and a two-player mode, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Manhattan Project is a masterfully crafted beat-em-up. <laughs>